We have here today Lynn Hubschman, who um, is a public speaker, a published author who has published four books now. Is that right, Lynn? Four books. Wow. So Lynn, I'm sure, can tell us more about that shortly. Um, she speaks frequently and enlightens people on this really important topic. So I am going to hand over to Lynn now so she can enlighten us and hopefully reveal some secrets that are going to enrich every aspect of our lives, mind, body, and soul. Lovely to have you with us, Lynn. Thank you, Sharon. I'm delighted. And I'm sitting here in Philadelphia. Pennsylvania and what a wonderful world we live in that something like this can happen. Absolutely. Um, my background includes a degree in psychology and a master's in social work from the University of Pennsylvania. Wow. And I have been a relationship and pre-marriage and marriage counselor and sex therapist for over 30 years. Wow. And I have two books out now that deal with everything about life, love, and sex. My book before this was 20 years ago about transsexuals. And I was on all the national TV talk shows because no one really dealt with that issue mm -hmm. um, 20 years ago. There's nothing I haven't heard, Sharon. <laughs> I am sure. And, I am sure. Yeah. And I'm happy to have people uh, contact me on Facebook. Um, I'm only on Facebook, which drives me nuts uh, for my books. And the two books now are called Woozy Wisdom and mm -hmm. in parentheses, Grandmother Woozy, which my grandchildren call me, all three of them. Oh, Wisdom which I've gained both professionally and personally. Mm -hmm. And what I find is that in all these decades, very few people are fulfilled, happy, contented, sexually free. Mm -hmm. And today with the internet and dating sites and relationships just are not connecting in the way they used to. Yeah. And someone's always looking for the next best person to come along. Yes. And yes. what what your um, interests are with entrepreneurs and people who are in business, especially mm -hmm. women, it would be interesting for them to hear something that I have to say, but they may not agree with. And that is that successful, smart women have a harder time learning how to love, how to give themselves completely, how to be totally vulnerable. And that's what love demands. Now you can have great sex without love. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can have a certain kind of love without sex, but not usually. And people are not educated. They're not taught what to do, how to do, what to expect. We learn what we see growing up in our family, and most yeah. families are not great examples. And we learn kind of by experience, hit or miss, uh, what friends have to say, what the movies look like. But the individual experience is always very personal. And there's no way to live a fulfilled, total life without mm -hmm. being connected in that way. But mm -hmm. not everybody wants it. Not everybody's able to do it. Yeah. And for some people, that's okay. Yeah. And we can't decide the way anybody should live. However, no. what you are emotionally reflects in everything you do. Mm -hmm. If you're an angry person at home, you don't go to work and all of a sudden become this lovey-dovey, nice human being. Mm -hmm. If you're sexually thwarted, your behavior at your job will display some of that. You can't yeah. hide what you are. Mm -hmm. And it permeates everything that we do. Mm -hmm. So to find people that are really fulfilled, reasonably mature, interesting, loving, Mm. It's rare. 
and to find yeah. great relationships today mm -hmm. is different. Kids yeah. today, millennials, they're thinking about marriage. They're not jumping in at 25 like we did in another generation mm -hmm. to have sex. They're not deciding to have babies because everybody's doing it. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different ball game. Yeah. And I kind in my book is made up from my blog from short essays that are fun to read and fun to share. Mm -hmm. And people learn from them. Yeah. And one of the things I like is about the animal kingdom. And the penguins pair have a baby penguin. And when the baby penguin is able to sort of fend for itself, they move on and find another mate. So it's serial monogamy. <laughs> and for some, wow. that's great. <laughs> the bonobos, which are our closest in the animal world, they're pygmy chimpanzees. Yeah. They have sex with anybody, anytime, whenever they want. They are <laughs> the least warlike animals on the planet. Oh, that, really? Wow. That's another, another model. Yeah. And today, many people are having affairs or being involved with other people and remaining in marriage. It can hold the marriage together lots of times. Mm -hmm. There are other instances where there are open relationships where mm -hmm they're out doing their thing and the partner knows about it or the partner is doing the same thing. Yeah. But we can't write a ticket for everybody because no. we're, all, we're all different. We grew up in different homes with different values and we have our own experiences. Mm -hmm. But the ego, how you feel about yourself gets set very early in life when we're what I call victims of parents. And if we're <laughs> made to feel good, that carries us a long way. I mean, mm -hmm. there, are, there are some people that are really quite homely, not very interesting or bright, but they think they're terrific because that's the message they got. Now they may get another message outside, but inside they're feeling pretty good. Yeah. Or it's the other side where, you know, the parent has a kid that comes home with some scribbly paper and the parents act like, you know, it's Picasso. Mm -hmm. and the child gets a different message. So we all come from a background that gives us a message about who we are, how we feel about ourselves, and then we mm -hmm. project it and test it out in the world. And the world can agree with it or the world cannot agree with it. Which mm -hmm. For some, they come down pretty hard. Yeah. But it's important to look at who you are, how you got to be the way you are, <clears throat> what kind of insight you have into mm -hmm. your life. It's and very interesting. Cause sorry, I just, it's very interesting to say that because my experience and particularly talking to friends as well the previous generation to ours are not very aware they're not self-aware they're not reflective in the way that you're you're discussing with us which is quite no fun. it's the me too generation it's it's all about me mm. and they don't learn that it's important yeah. to connect with someone yeah. else but and I'm meaning selfish. I'm I'm actually thinking my generation, looking back at how life was growing up, and you cannot talk to parents about the impact because they don't actually see, generally speaking, from my experience talking with friends of the same age, our parents' generation don't have the capacity to understand that there's actually an impact from what they did raising children. And that's wrong. Really interesting. It's and it's really interesting. So it's interesting hearing you talk about this as a grandmother, and yet my parents' generation, there isn't that ability to, to reflect on, on the way they brought children up and the impact that that had. Well, they don't want to feel guilty, number one. No. 
and mm -hmm. they don't, they never really connected with intimacy with children. How many parents really talk to their children about sexuality and answer mm -hmm. the real questions? It's impossible, difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah. In order to learn how to connect with the opposite sex, or if you're homosexual with the same sex, mm -hmm. intim intimacy is not something that you read about and learn in a book. It's something yeah. that you experience and learn and have ups and downs mm -hmm. and hopefully grow from. Now, yeah. the only way people change is through crisis mm -hmm. or, or great insight or going to a professional like someone like me and we kind of yeah. guide you through the steps. Mm -hmm. But most people don't even take the time to think, am I really happy? What's getting in the way? Mm. What can I do to change it and learn? Yeah. How to think, that? yeah. That's why I wrote these books to help yeah. people really look at these issues and learn how to have great relationships. And how was it for you um, raising these issues at a time where it must have been quite controversial? Well, I told you I wrote about transsexuals 20 yeah. years ago, yeah. talk about controversial. <laughs> but I used to speak to over 250 groups a year. And wow. I, looked, I lectured, I taught, and I was always a private counselor. Yeah. So when I would meet with people or with groups, I would start out by asking questions, like on a scale from one to 10, how happy are you? Mm -hmm. Rate your relationship. Mm -hmm. What did you learn about being a sexual human being? Mm -hmm. And people would kind of think about these things and it would open them up. Um, mm -hmm. If ever I wanted to cause a room full of people, whether it's two or a thousand, I would say, well, now let's talk about your sex life and who's going to be the first one to raise their hand. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> and even in counseling with couples, with marriage counseling, they will tell you what's in their bank account before you have to pull out what goes on in the bedroom where you're really naked in more ways than one. Yeah. It's and I guess for men so particularly, personal. it must be incredibly hard for men because of the ego, as you say, and it's just inextricably linked. Yes. But one of the things about this younger generation, I think, is that men are becoming more sensitive they yes. are they are not the macho, strong, never shed a tear guy that used to be. And, yeah. and they're not always the main breadwinner. So mm -hmm. women have become independent, they're educated, and men have had to change as a result. And I think that part of what's taken place is good. Yes. Because I've never thought about that before. That's interesting. Yes, and to, to be vulnerable as a man today is not what it used to be before. No. Now, that's not all men, and there are certain cultures where it's still rigid. But in America, for example, um, young men are able to have emotion and attempt to not be the macho, macho guy. Yeah. And that's, that's refreshing. What, what I will be interested to see is how social media is going to impact on um, the next generation coming through because a lot of those connections have gone because everybody's on their phone or connected to a device. Yeah, and my husband and I go out quite frequently. We're in a restaurant full of young people and they're texting or they're on the phone. They're not connecting eyeball to eyeball and really talking. One of the most difficult things to do, and I used to do it with groups, um, couples groups, and I would say, I want the two of you to look each other in the eye, not say a word mm -hmm. for one minute. Mm -hmm. You have no idea how difficult that is for people. 
It would be incredibly difficult. And then I would say to couples, tell your partner something important about you. So they would say something. And then I would have the partner say, what did, what did you just hear? Not only what did you hear, what do you think was being said? Again, Next, yeah. shocking, shocking. Communication that should be flowing and understood and uh, picked up on, mm -hmm. total blank. Mm -hmm. We're all misconstrued. Yeah. So communication today is a big thing. And mm -hmm. young couples really are not connecting um, eyeball to eyeball. Yeah, true. Um, I think, though, that... <laughs> Now, online dating has become so mainstream because we, the whole way that society plays out means that we don't have the ability to connect as easily face to face without connecting through social media. But it's an interesting twist, most definitely. Um, I mean, you have to be very careful. I mean, it's not a safe world, unfortunately. No, not at all. And you really do need to be careful. You'll be interested. Uh, the thing that uh, people lie about on dating sites are age, weight, yep. and height. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> uh, frequently, they put on pictures that were taken quite a while ago. Yes, I can yeah. well imagine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As so if they don't think they're going to be found out. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of fun to explore. Uh, we have another friend. She was a very wealthy woman. And she was divorced for a number of years. And I saw her at a party with a, a man. And I said, uh, are you seeing him? She said, yeah, we've been together for a couple of years. She said, however, when I met him in New York, he gave me his background and I couldn't check it all out. She said, I hired a private detective. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and checked it out. And she's been with him a couple of years because he did check out. <laughs> That was probably a, quite a smart thing to do. So if we can look at how this impacts on business. So you've already touched on the fact that nowadays, nowadays, I guess, women are not focusing on being homemakers quite so right. much. Women are having children later on in life. Um, I know are not marrying. Yep, yep, that's also true. I guess for me, the biggest commitment is having children, not getting married. Um, that that's that's the biggest commitment. That's my personal. You know that over forty percent of the American babies are born to a single mother. Really? When you say single, you mean as in Un unmarried, unmarried, but with a partner? Not necessarily. Okay, because I think that that in itself is quite a big, for me, whether you're married or not, isn't such a big deal versus whether you're bringing up children on your own versus with a partner. So for me, almost they're almost synonymous being married and, you know, a de facto relationship. Well, um, I think we know that that's certainly um, the, the plus that we would hope for because you then see a relationship, you see what a man's supposed to be, what a woman's yeah. supposed to be. And yeah, yeah we, and uh, not, not talking about um, just the finances and supporting uh, mm -hmm. a child. Uh, it's not the easy. That you present to your children. And I, I know how hard it is bringing up three children with a husband um, on board. How people do it without, I, I really don't know. It must be an enormous struggle. It Just is. It is. Of, and we you were talking before about women working. Yeah. The mother working has a pull that is extreme because if a child is sick or if you want to go to see something at the school, whatever, and you've got a big meeting at work or a deal to close, women have a pull. It's different for men. They don't have that same pull. You're so, so right. You know, I know that I feel that hugely because it's just a natural assumption that because my office happens to be at home, that therefore I'm the one that deals with appointments and early pickups and sick children and everything else and i well, think all, all mothers have 
the extra burden. Men yeah. and fathers or husbands do not have that. Right. No, but women in work today, um, women are paid less by and large. Uh, mm -hmm. They are not the top CEO by and large. Mm -hmm. And they have the dual role of running the house, taking care of children, and work. And yeah. work work um, is demanding in a way that if you've got a bad day and you come home, you don't just shake it. Mm -hmm. And if you've had a bad time at home and go to work, it doesn't just disappear. No. Um, it can be a salvation that you get away from a bad situation. Mm -hmm. And um, if you really love your work and enjoy it, or if you're creative or mm -hmm. in, into whatever, mm -hmm. it, it can be um, the, the lifeblood. But yeah. for, for the majority of women and for the women who have to work, that's a whole different story. Mm. And that's pressure. It and is. we have, you know, we have a terrible opioid uh, situation in America. Um, women with heart attacks and women with um, crippling situations that they can't just get out of. Mm. It's, yeah. it's not easy. No. So women in work um, can be great. It can be horrible, and for most, it's somewhere in between. Yeah. So what can the modern woman do to improve their personal and therefore their business um, lives? The real issue is to be honest with yourself and to say, are you happy with your life? Now, nobody's happy all the time. I mean, and no. happiness is relative. It's not yeah. you know, happy, happy, happy. But mm -hmm. basically, is your life the way you want it? And that that's all encompassing. However, mm -hmm. if the root of it, which is usually a relationship, yeah. And there's all kinds of love. I mean, some people love pets, some people love uh, politics. I mean, all kinds of yeah. love. But I'm talking about the majority, basic love between a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. If that's reasonably satisfying and going yeah. well, mm -hmm. then no problem. But if you say something's wrong, mm -hmm. either at work, or at home, or just generally with you, yeah. you've, got to, you've got to address it, which is number mm -hmm. one. Absolutely. And once you address it, and if you're honest, then that's the first step to making something better. Uh -huh. And it doesn't happen automatically, and it doesn't happen fast. And for some, it doesn't happen. Uh -huh. But there are there are ways, and I've been around and counseled people for decades. I know that people have their lives. Yeah. And sometimes it takes help, mm -hmm. professional help, or as I said before, a crisis will force people to change in a way that they never thought they would. Mm -hmm. And really just insight, just thinking about it. Yeah. I had a friend, uh, he was, I guess, in his 70s, married a long time, very successful, nice-looking guy. Mm -hmm. And one day he was sitting and talking with me, and he said, you know, I never wanted to be touched. And I looked wow. at him, and I said, you're married all these years? <clears throat> I said, never wanted to be touched? I said, didn't it occur to you that this might be a problem? He said, I was so busy at work, making money, raising children, whatever. He said, I never thought about it. Wow. Well, you got to think about it. So why waste decades and just go through the motions or be there for the wrong reasons? You've got to be honest. And your heart will never lie to you. Your heart will tell you whether it's happening. And you have to trust it. 
I like that. That's um, that's a lovely comment. I really like that. Well, you have to be brave. It's scary, and being vulnerable is the scariest thing on earth. Yeah, but that's what, that's what love demands. And yes. there's a reason why every song, every writer, every philosopher talks about love because it's hard to get. But once you know it and once you have it, you mm -hmm. don't want to live any other way. Absolutely. And one of the interesting things, Sharon, having worked in the hospital, I can tell you that health and illness and emotional life are very closely connected. Oh, inextricably linked, yes. Mind, body, and soul. I absolutely yeah. believe that. Yeah. And it's a shame, again, that people are not educated about the most important things in life, which have to do with what everybody wants, to love and be loved. Um, to be a feminine, successful woman, wife, mother, entrepreneur, to put all of it together takes a lot of doing. Yes. And it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't come easily. No. And if you're, if you're, you're, if you're paying a price on one end, you need to look at what you're getting in return on the other end. And the question then becomes, is it worth it? That is makes so much sense. Lynn, thank you so much for My pleasure. with us. Um, I definitely have to get your book. I will drop the link for everybody um, when I write the posts and I will share them on your page as well. And so I'm happy I'll to have people disagree and, and discuss and yep. Uh, get in touch. Um, I promise that the book will give you insight. Both I'm books. sure. Yeah, and just you speak so well. So what you say is so it resonates. It's interesting. It's enlightening. And I definitely want to read the book and learn more. Thank you so much for your time. Thank Liz. you. Thank you. Take Good care. Night. See you. Bye bye. Thanks so bye. much. To who's tuned in today so um i will see you all same time next week thanks so much bye bye